Okay, so welcome back. Uh, so we'll continue our discussion on that CND voice management that we have been doing uh, in last uh, <coughs> for the last uh, two modules. We have uh, already, this is the third module on CND voice. So we were we were at this particular slide in the last uh, uh, video, if you remember, and so we were talking about different components of CND uh, materials. Uh, so we have concrete, we have asphalt. And uh, so in terms of concrete, what is concrete? So what is the, the many times we use the word Portland concrete or Portland, sorry, cement. What is uh, cement and then we'll talk about concrete. So in terms of the cement, cement is essentially what? So the cement is uh, uh, tricalcium silicate, dicalcium silicate. So essentially it is calcium, aluminum, iron. So these are the three major components uh, and of course oxygen. So these are the four major component which is there in, in a cement. So it's a lime uh, rich material. So it's uh, limestone, cell, clay ash, clay, fly ash, and so those are used silica and aluminum and it also has some iron containing material. So these are the major source, uh, major elements which is present in a Portland cement or, or in a cement as we call it. So, so in terms of uh, how we get this made, uh, you have the raw material and fuel, you put it in a cement clean, you sometimes you also add gypsum which is calcium sulphate. So concrete component, cement is the key ingredient of concrete. So we, so we but uh, makes up 11%. So 11% in terms of the concrete, uh, first let's look at the cement. So you put some raw material that you saw in the earlier uh, slide. So those are different uh, uh, silicate material. You put some calcium sulphate, which is then you go have it through the clinker, then go through the ball mill, which makes its finer, finer uh, uh, particle. And then you have your Portland cement being made out of that. So using this Portland cement, you will make the concrete. So in concrete, we have the Portland cement, we have some water, we have some air, uh, sand, which is a fine aggregate, then gravel and crust stone, which is the uh, coarse aggregate. You may have seen these kind of machines these days at, at uh, even at the smaller construction sites where you put all those things together and it rotates and it mixes it. Earlier, we used to do it by hand. Uh, as if in your, if you are a civil engineer in your concrete class, uh, in your concrete lab class, you may have made some uh, concrete uh, using cement and different components uh, in terms of uh, sand and uh, you may have done the particle size distribution as well, gravel and all those kind of stuff. So that's how we get the concrete made and uh, test our cubes uh, every like uh, 7 days, 14 days, 20, if we go up to 28 days usually. So, so this is uh, in terms of cement and the concrete. Uh, so we talked so in terms of the concrete, once the concrete is made that can be laid into different shapes. So a lot, lot of pipes, pipes are used like walls and construction construction sites, so a lot of uh, cement concrete is used. Then it is a, it's a high volume material and uh, low value usually in terms of uh, uh, cost is comparatively not as high as some of the other components and it is a it is a replacement for crushed stone as a raw material. So it is it, it can be used uh, for a, a replacement uh, for the crushed stone as a raw material. So we see kind of a lot of uh, Portland and cement uh, concrete, concrete is used a lot in any of the many of the constructions today. Uh, if you have if you go around and see in your area you will find lots of concrete uh, in any buildings that is being constructed lots and lots of concrete work. So it is used, used as a fill, uh, used as a fill is very common. Uh, use the filling in the low lying area and uh, in terms of what is, uh, so that is on uh, Portland cement and Portland cement concrete. In terms of the asphalt concrete, it is uh, asphalt concrete is uh, basically the asphalt that you see for the road construction. It is a heavily recycled uh, new hot mix asphalt and uh, we have asphalt cement which is known which is actually bitumen. Uh, we also uh, in western world they call it asphalt. Uh, asphalt concrete is asphalt cement which is the bitumen plus fine and coarse aggregate. So and uh, asphalt concrete contains approximately 6% of uh, bitumen or 6% of uh, asphalt by weight and then there are this fine and coarse aggregate which goes in there. So again you have uh, how it is done, you have uh, asphalt, uh, is, so in terms of the reclaimed asphalt pavement, you can use reclaimed asphalt pavement as well. So it is a hot mix asphalt storage bin and truck loadout. So this is the hot mix asphalt being made, uh, truck is actually taking it out and that will take it to the uh, laying of road and then you have uh, uh, to make to make the new material to make the new asphalt you have the aggregate bins you have a drum mixture which can make the new uh, asphalt of course you need some air pollution control device you don't see that much 
in uh, in the Indian contest or in like a developing countries, but in developed countries, this air pollution system is kind of a must, and it should be there. And then uh, so you can also have wrap uh, conveyor, which is the reclaimed asphalt pavement. You can have wrap a stockpile, reclaimed asphalt pavement a stockpile, and then you, this can be used as a ingredient to make a, a new asphalt pavement. Uh, so this is and then the asphalt cement storage is there. So this is like a typical layout of a hot mix asphalt plant. <coughs> then the other one we had the uh, wood which is the boiler can be used as a boiler fuel can be used as a mulch. Mulch is when you basically make a small small uh, pieces uh, of a uh, like a chips of wooden and that can be used in a playground as a as a material as a bedding material so it kind of has a cushion material he also uses a bedding material for animals and all that so that's uh, it's used there uh, so here you see the clean wood kind of material and uh, in this picture you see a construction and demolition waste like all these things are mixed up together so it's not that clean material but uh, here again if you make a mulch out of that or make a boiler a boiler fuel uh, the concern with boiler fuel is that some of the heavy metal containing substances may be present here. Same thing with the mulch, uh, you, if you have a heavy metal containing things that may create uh, uh, leaching issues or uh, uh, like your soil contamination issues uh, uh, when you use this mulch. So, but do like there are issues of uh, uh, heavy metals, uh, it's, a, it's a real issue from the lead based paint. Uh, it also from uh, uh, treated wood, uh, especially in the hot, humid weather of uh, uh, in Florida and those kind of states where you people are used, people use a lot of uh, hot, like a pressure treated wood, and that helps prevent its decay, uh, prevents find those termites. But it, uh, since it has chromium and arsenic and as well as copper, uh, they do leach, leach out in a, when in contact with moisture or even in the soil. So processed wood is used as a boiler fuel and uh, then sometimes if a boiler fuel processed wood has some sort of heavy metal contamination, your boiler fuel, the ash that is produced, you will see a slightly higher elevated, uh, um, uh, like a um, slightly higher elevated, uh, uh, this um, uh, what, what to say, like a elevated concentration of heavy metals in those ash and that ash uh, some could potentially be a hazardous waste as well. Uh, it can be depending on how uh, high is the concentration. Then uh, mulch uh, which is basically chipped wood as you can see over in the picture behind uh, this, uh, over this all these uh, like a chipped wood. Here again if you have a and many many times it is given out for free even if you have some heavy metals that uh, may cause some leaching. You see the red color, uh, red color uh, of uh, this mulch. Uh, this red color is essentially coming from uh, iron oxide. So iron oxide is used to treat that and the reason for iron oxide being used is iron oxide uh, actually helps binding of arsenic. So iron and arsenic chemistry is very interesting chemistry. So if you look at the iron, uh, uh, iron chemistry and you see that how iron actually help bind arsenic and so that uh, Although arsenic is there, but it is does, does not actually leach off. So we had a, I would like to share one uh, a small project we did regarding this few years back, uh, almost uh, several, actually several years back now, where we had this uh, colored mulch, uh, which we put in on the roof and let it uh, go through a season. So uh, in the first season, it could hold on to arsenic it, and it was a arsenic contaminated uh, mulch which we knew. So in the year one during the season, we, it could, we could see that the, it could hold on to arsenic. But from year two, whether it was a colored mulch, colored mulch is the arsenic uh, like iron treated basically you are using iron oxide as a uh, there. Or, or, so it's whether it's iron treated or with, whether it's not iron treated, the difference was not a statistically significant uh, difference. So with that uh, kind of a one season or uh, maybe maximum to one like a uh, if you make slightly more uh, treatment, it may probably go for two seasons. But after that, uh, the protection of uh, arsenic leaching goes away. So that's uh, that's a we wanted to know how much uh, how long this uh, iron oxide can hold on to arsenic. So that's uh, we we came to know about that. Uh, so it's not slightly more than a year, but not not too long. And then. Um, so this is another picture you see where this is much nicer, nice and nice light, light red color. So whenever you see this red color mulch, one thing it tells you that of course iron, it's iron treated. The second and most important thing it tells you it's, it's it looks like it, it's a 
coming from a recycled wood. It's not the fresh wood. Fresh wood, they will not color it because there is no uh, uh, issue of uh, any contamination and also things looks all nice and uh, similar. But in the weathered wood, like the old wood, as you can see, when you have the weathered, weathered wood, things, some of them may be silvery gray color, some may look a black color. So even the mulch does not look very good. So as you know, as a marketing, uh, the one thing for get people excited to buy is the it's a presence, how it is presented. So it's that's why people actually do a lot of uh, even a study on how to present something. This whole interior designer or uh, there are a lot of other degrees out there. It's based on how to how to keep the same stuff in a uh, so and that's gives it a very good uh, look or kind of people are more excited about it. So here with this red color, people get excited about this mulch and then uh, that helps it uh, market uh, as well. So mulch gets sold off in uh, these kind of uh, bags. So that is uh, used uh, colored mulch, like a red mulch. You can see on the parking lot, you can see in the uh, area, this is your red mulch right there. So. And many times when you see all these red mulch, uh, you, can, uh, you can always spot, if you look very carefully, you can always spot some uh, recycled wood there. So it will, it's actually a mixture of both. Then as for singles, uh, you can see all those uh, singles coming out of the roof. Uh, it can be recycled into new hot mix asphalt, not currently practiced in some states. Uh, in, uh, so this was basically, uh, we were talking about these things in US. Some states do it, some states don't do it, but uh, it can be done. More, most, many of the Western European countries do it. And in India, we don't have that practice because we don't use that much of asphalt singles anyway. But we do have a practice of doing that asphalt from the road. So our road, uh, uh, it gets recycled. We do have a practice of reclaimed asphalt pavement uh, these days. So singles recycling is there. So singles from singles, it can be made into uh, like asphalt and from the asphalt that can go into the uh, asphalt uh, into, into the road construction. So that's uh, is always done. Uh, gypsum drywall, uh, it's uh, again uh, not that much popular from the Indian contest, but from the global point of view, if you want to look at, uh, it's, uh, it is the recycling of this is done and uh, it's recycled into new gypsum. It is also recycled into, uh, made into a soil amendment. So the gypsum drywall, you take the drywall, you uh, let, let it become a powdery substance. So gypsum drywall essentially in the middle is calcium sulfate uh, with two molecules of water. And then it has a layer of paper on, the, on this side. So in the middle we have that and more, both of my hands is kind of like a layer of paper uh, where the paper is on, uh, on, the, on the gypsum board. So that's, uh, so paper acts as a organic, uh, uh, a, a, like the paper is the organics uh, present there. So, but it's uh, recycled, used in a, uh, so many times in, in terms of uh, recycling, especially depending on what kind of application, they will try to take this paper out. If you look at very carefully in this particular picture over here, you can see the paper on top of, uh, you can look at that basically what you see on that is actually paper. So both sides will have paper, in the middle is a calcium sulfate. So you try to remove all these two papers and uh, then take this calcium sulfate out and then try to uh, make a powdery substance out of it which can be used as a soil amendment or maybe making a uh, recycled uh, uh, gypsum drywall. So let's see, then markets in terms of uh, new drywall, uh, Portland cement production because calcium sulfate is also needed in, the, uh, in terms of production of cement. It can be used in agriculture, can be used as a construction material. So there are different markets out there which could be used uh, for, uh, for the gypsum drywall. So there are other uh, materials out there in terms of the soil, land carrying debris, you have uh, vinyl sliding, uh, this is used in India also a lot, cardboard, ceiling tiles. Uh, those, so these are uh, out there. In terms of, again, as I said earlier, uh, in terms of the major thing that we have is to see in the debris recycling is economics. The economics has to work. It has to make profit. At least it has to be self-sustainable. Inertia. Inertia is that people just don't want to change. Say if the material is available, for example, wooden uh, or if you think about concrete or brick and other stuff, if the material is already available in there in the market, people think that why we should go for recycling, recycling means we have to learn about the new technology. So there is always an inertia to do something new. But that can be broken down by putting some regulation, putting some fees, putting some penalties. So that inertia can be broken off. But then we need to make sure that the economics work 
and the environmental issues are taken care of because since you are using different types of chemicals and other stuff you need to make sure that uh, it's a uh, it's safe it is safe to beneficial reuse it so that's what we call it a beneficial reuse risk assessment so beneficial reuse risk assessment essentially is a pro you have a protocol in which you have you want to recycle certain uh, uh, construction and demolition waste or any industrial waste which could be potentially be used in a road in a in a construction project we need to make sure that 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 particular uh, product or particular uh, compound or whatever we are kind of trying to use will be safe uh, to use in that from an environmental point of view whether there will be any, any adverse impact on health and whether it will go into the soil from soil to uh, the food or uh, in like a water or in the air phase. So, we have to make sure that the, it is, uh, it is co correct and it does not do that kind of a uh, problem. So, for, for that uh, environmental and then the, what we need is a, a it is basically as now we have the CND waste management rules the next step well, as we have the CPHEO manual for municipal solid waste, we need a basically beneficial reuse, beneficial, uh, 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 beneficial reuse risk assessment manual, uh, which uh, for uh, the CND waste or any industrial waste for that matter, and that should all have a structural component as well as the environmental component because the structural is important you have to make sure the product has so that the material has the requisite strength that is needed to design and to uh, to do anything but at the same time there is a environmental component which is also very important to find out that if we if it's good structurally now we want to use it in a uh, potential construction whether there will be any environmental implication of that whether it is has some sort of contamination which will create some problem so that's where the environmental picture comes in and that's a big area area of uh, work which has been done over several years in, uh, in Western European countries in US, Canada and other places. In Indian context is still we like having that guideline document is very, very essential and uh, I hope uh, like we, we did to have submitted something to DST along that line. Uh, I hope that it, it gets funded so that we can come up with a design guide. It's a, it's a essentially it's a guideline document which will help the CND waste uh, industry as well as other industrial waste industry like uh, uh, the fly ash and other uh, uh, material that is produced that can be to whether we can how we can do beneficial reuse risk assessment and uh, these we can even look at uh, uh, the overall picture of life cycle analysis and those things uh, along that line as well. So, economics should evaluate prior to the start of the project. We have to look at the disposal cost, container cost, availability of the local market, availability of the local recycling services. So, all these things uh, and this may not be exhaust exhaustive, there could be some other factors that we need to look at it as well. But economics has to work. If the economics does not work, so you are, you are not going to survive in that business for a long period of time. Inertia like how do you change the status quo? The people always like to have a status quo need uh, and we need to have constant education and reinforcement keep on telling why it is important to not have a status quo and do something different. So and then we need dedicated oversight we need somebody has to have a close eye on what is going on. Environmental issues uh, may be much different if you are talking about construction versus demolition. For example, in the demolition we have like lead based paint, asbestos, treated wood and all those things will be there. In the construction waste as well you can have some of these but, uh, but not all of them and then they will not be mixed together uh, because uh, usually they are not. So, in terms of uh, some of the other material like asbestos, uh, asbestos uh, it is a it's it's a uh, it's a hazardous waste into the demolition uh, hazardous material. It it's a type of naturally min naturally occurring mineral that has been widely used in various products, including construction uh, construction material because of its excellent mechanical and thermal properties. So asbestos is used a lot, but asbestos is considered a hazardous material. So why is asbestos a concern? Uh, because of the mesothelioma, lung cancer, its uh, respiration of asbestos fibers has been shown to result in a number of serious illness. So that uh, that's the reason why the, it's a hazardous material and needs to be looked at carefully. And in terms of asbestos material, you can have chrysolite, chrysotile, uh, crossidolite, amosite. So these are some of the asbestos material. And in terms of regulation, uh, we do have uh, there is uh, it's not a regular hazardous waste, but regulated under uh, Clean Air Act and also Toxic Substances Control Act. So those two act actually act work on uh, asbestos. 
So uh, then there are some other hazardous material like uh, several, so in terms of asbestos, we have the asbestos hazardous emergency ad, asbestos bane and phase out rule, national emission standards, so niche app, HAZOP, all those standards are there. Asbestos Hazard Emergency Act created regulations for removing asbestos from the school. So nowadays the old buildings uh, still have asbestos uh, because asbestos was a very good insulation. So that's why the, in old buildings in many parts uh, in the western world they still have asbestos. So the, when they try to take the building out it requires a lot of effort uh, because it has to be taken out in a way so that less and less number of people are exposed to it. So asbestos was banned, uh, banned certain asbestos containing product like corrugated paper, railboard, commercial paper, specialty paper, flooring plant, no uses, so new uses of asbestos. So all asbestos product, not all asbestos products are banned but there are certain uh, asbestos product which is not being uh, used. Uh, NISHAP is there which is, uh, is uh, one of the hazardous waste air pollutant rules as per the US uh, rule part here. Uh, it's regulated for handling the IS, uh, asbestos before, during and after demolition. So there are uh, again asbestos containing material, if you have more than 1% asbestos using IP appropriate polarized light microscopy method, so that is considered asbestos containing material, if you have more than 1%. So if you live this 1% you are fine. So, uh, so in terms of uh, uh, asbestos uh, material like it is when dry it trumbles, pulverizes or reduces to power by hand pressure, so you can do that. Asbestos containing material they, they can crumble. and. Uh, so categories of ACM like friable ACM, category 1 non-friable, category 2 non-friable. So those are uh, one uh, which is used uh, in terms of uh, different types of material. Non-friable ACM like packing, gasket, resilient floor, covering and asphalt roofing. Uh, non-friable, uh, so another, another category is any non-friable element not in category 1. So which is uh, you can have a friable uh, ACM, non-friable ACM that has become a friable due to destructive uh, handling. Category 1 non friable ACM, category 2 non friable ACM, so those things are uh, seems to be working uh, okay. So that uh, can be used in terms of uh, uh, it, it's, it's, we have to be careful in terms of its recycling, but there are based on its uh, if you process it along these lines, it can potentially be used. So it is we talked about this, we then requirements for asbestos inspection, inspect a building of asbestos before demolition or renovation. Uh, inform the local uh, uh, authority about the demolition 10 working days before demolition, asbestos is present, remove asbestos in the presence of EPA certified asbestos manager, so those things are there. So it is you need to do a notice of asbestos renovation, so if whenever you are working with asbestos that is very, 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 very important uh, because it creates a lot of uh, lungs, lung issues and other stuff. So when um, must asbestos be removed if combined uh, with the regulated asbestos containing material, so you can. Uh, but you can have a lot of uh, uh, like a, you know, in, so when you have, uh, uh, if you have combined the regulated asbestos containing material, gradually we are trying to get rid of all this asbestos material. So if you have, uh, for example, here we have 80 linear meters of pipe, at least 15 meters square on other facility components, 1 meter cube off facility components where length of area could not be measured. So those are in terms of uh, area for this asbestos. Uh, uh, like, uh, thing that we are talking about. So in terms of removal, worker must be a OSI approved uh, respiratory disease, RSCM must be adequately wetted, appropriate ventilation must be there, uh, asbestos must be wetted or wrapped in a leak tight container. So in terms of disposal, we try to con control the emissions by sealed containers, wetting, uh, why visible emissions must be controlled upon disposal, burial with 6 inches of non asbestos material, record keeping requirement is a must. So in terms of uh, other, uh, so this is basically we have kind of talked to you about uh, all the different types of material. So one of asbestos is one of, one of the more nasty one. Uh, we don't use asbestos in our construction that much. We do use asphalt uh, asbestos tiles in India and that is basically asbestos mixed with cement and other stuff. So asbestos tile as the tile is not going to harm you, but if you are using, uh, you are using it, working in a plant which uses as raw asbestos a lot in terms of making these uh, asbestos tiles and you are exposed to that, that is not very good for a long period of time. And the other thing is that uh, like there are uh, um, in terms of uh, 
uh, this uh, what I was talking about that it's a it since it has a, why it was being used because it was very good uh, fireproofing material it's a, it's a very good fireproofing material it's cheap so with the insulation material so that's the reason asbestos was very popular so so asbestos uh, one of the thing in terms of construction and demolition waste uh, when we talk about asbestos we don't don't mix it with other CND debris we keep it separate so. In terms of uh, in Indian contest when we have those asphalt uh, sorry asbestos tiles if you break those tiles make them fine powder and try to play with that of course you will get exposed to a little bit of asbestos fiber but otherwise you should not be exposed to asbestos fiber unless you are working with asbestos fiber in a in that uh, like industrial facility. So that uh, kind of gives you some idea about what are the different materials there what are the what is the CND waste how it is managed mostly recycling. And of course, it cannot be recycled landfilling. So those are two. There is no. We are not talking about waste to energy or those kind of stuff because uh, waste to uh, most of the stuff in here does not have that uh, like a calorific value and all that, uh, other than wood possibly. So that's uh, wood is used as a boiler boiler fuel anyway. So that's uh, that's over there. Uh, so. In terms of uh, this particular module, we talked about, uh, we started with looking at different types of CND material. We talked about the markets of them, what are, uh, how they are potentially recycled into what kind of new product. And so now we will, I was uh, telling you in the, uh, I think beginning of this video itself that uh, I will try to cover a little bit of uh, project related stuff related to CND waste. So we had one issue of in terms of Hurricane Katrina and we'll talk about that and then we'll I'll try to show you some pictures from Haiti as well. And uh, and then uh, if in, as part of uh, like if you know like if you are from Rishikesh, if you are from uh, uh, Uttarkashi in those areas or if you are in uh, wherever uh, say recently we had issues in, in Bombay in terms of a lot of rain on, on over a period of 2-3 days. So if you had seen some of these construction and demolition waste and if you are aware of how this CND waste it was managed in your area or is going is typically managed in your area, feel free to put that on the discussion board. It will help each one of us. Uh, I will also learn something new. But uh, at the same time, uh, it, uh, I would it's it's we are talking about construction and demolition waste. So that's uh, this on municipal solid waste. There is a separate uh, uh, questionnaire. We already asked you about that. If you have not responded to it, please go ahead and respond. And as I promised, uh, as I mentioned in the uh, last video, that towards the end of this course, we will actually make a summary of all of your respondent, and then we'll try to share that with you in the form of uh, one extra video. So with that, uh, let's uh, close this, and then in the next module, I will try to go over some of this Hurricane Katrina, and I'll show you lots of pictures. Basically, next, uh, at least the next module will be pictures and pictures and pictures, and we'll talk through pictures, uh, because pictures actually it's very very important. Uh, uh, in, in terms of conveying uh, some of the aspect which is much easier to do it using pictures than otherwise. So with that let us close, uh, keep, keep, right, keep uh, putting your stuff on the discussion board and uh, if you have any questions uh, contact us through the discussion board, uh, we will be more than happy. Uh, exam registration uh, I think uh, you, it's, you may have already done, if you have not done it's still dates is there, go ahead and do that if you are interested. And, uh, so I think that's pretty much it for this particular video and then I'll see you again in the next video. Thank you.